Most times, we always complain about our lives until we listen to others tell their story. He lost and he saw his legs rotting after a mine fell on him. At the same time, he also lost his wife and his two children all at once. Since he was not in his country, they refused to treat him and he watched his flesh fall off piece by piece. This is his story. He is called Adam John and he is 32 years old. He was born in Beya, a city located in southwest Tanzania. He grew up and he lost his father as he was getting done with high school. This made life hard because he had to start seeking for someone who would hire him since by then he was still no more like he was born and he had both legs. In 2006, he got his first job as a mower, a person that cuts grass. Adam later got a better job to work in the gold mines. It was not a very good paying job and he was told that in the mines of Mozambique they pay a little more money. He headed to Mozambique in 2011. When he got there, he faced a lot of various challenges. It was his first time that he had ever owned a passport, go to the border or even exchanged money and it was all new to him. He never knew the language that they speak in Mozambique. He came while being told to go to a certain part of this country where he could find his fellow Tanzanians and then they would give him a job that has a higher pay. Still, the job was about mining. When I got there, I met my fellow Tanzanians that were also looking for survival, so I joined them. They worked for some time and earned some little money, but this did not happen for long because later they were told to leave Mozambique and go back to their home countries. Well, it got famous on the news and it was not only Tanzania because even people from Senegal, Canada, Thailand, Sri Lanka were also told to leave and do the same. He was fortunate that by then he could speak their language fluently, so he did not leave. He had a wife and children in Mozambique, so he had many reasons to stay and he did so. He told them that he was born in Mozambique and then, because he could speak their language perfectly, they believed him. He continued working in the gold mines and he did this for about one year. In January 2018 is when he stopped working at the gold mines and then he relocated and started mining the ruby stones and this is where he was getting money from. In April, he felt like he missed his country Tanzania a lot. A lot of people kept on telling him how beautiful it had become and he wanted to go there for a visit. After some time, there came a girl. She told him that she knew that he wanted to go to Tanzania and she said that if he wanted, she could take him along with him. They knew each other and he wondered where she had got the money from. She said that she had got some ruby stones from the mines and she was going to sell them and get the money that they were going to use as transport. He asked her where she got the stones from so that he could also go and dig them for himself too. She said that they had been digging there for quite some time and there was nothing left. He kept on insisting and she showed him the hole where they had got the stones from and then she walked back. Early the next morning, he came back with some people to dig and get the ruby stones. When he got there, he noticed that they had been digging this place for quite a very long time and it was getting soft and filled with water so they had to be very careful while digging. He told his eight friends that this hole was so dangerous and they may not make it out alive but they were determined to dig and get the ruby stones because there were a lot of wealth. As they were digging, he stood by a pillar. Unfortunately, the mines collapsed and they fell on them. They were buried underground. When that happened, I lost my understanding. But as the people were digging me out, that is when I got my senses back. They gave me a rope trying to pull me out. I couldn't feel the lower part of my body anymore. It was like I was paralyzed. They were buried 18 meters below ground level and he asked the people that came to his rescue where his friends were. He was told that they had been taken to the hospital and he had voices of people crying, but honestly, he did not know what had happened. 
a good Samaritan took him to the hospital, but it was not easy for him to get treated because he was not a citizen in Mozambique and all his documents were all Tanzanian. He wondered how long he was going to stay in this hospital waiting for him to be treated. He decided to tell the doctors the truth that he was Tanzanian and all he needed was to go back to his country. His wife came by the hospital to visit him and she said that she was not surprised because she knew that this was going to happen some day. He asked her not to say such words because he was in a very bad condition and this would seem like torture. She left and walked away with their children and she was not at all interested in Adam ever again. At the hospital, they stopped treating him. They were trying to figure out a way to take him back to Tanzania. They failed to get one, but there was an ambulance that was going to transport dead bodies to a place next to the border of Tanzania, and this is where he needed to go. On the same day, there was a government official that had died. People over the roads were striking and fighting. Since he was Tanzanian and they had been chased away from this country, he got scared and he decided to be taken with the dead bodies. He was put into that ambulance on the top of the dead bodies. They had an eight-hour journey from the hospital to the place where the bodies were being taken. They were smelling so bad, but he had got used because he also had started rotting. The drivers used to have a few stops to have food and he was in the ambulance with the dead bodies and he couldn't move. They dropped him off in Pemba next to the border of Tanzania where he spent two weeks. After failing to know what to do next, they put him at the back of a pickup truck to transport him back to the mines where his fellow Tanzanians were. At the back of the truck, it was so windy and shaky and his body got hurt a lot. When he got to that hospital, he was taken to the emergency room because his condition was alarming. He spent three days in there without anyone treating him. Since he had a lot of wounds, the bed sheets got attached to them and pulling it over to cover himself was a lot of pain. Fortunately, there came some Tanzanian people in this hospital and he told them what was happening to him. There was also another man that had been cut by a machete during the strikes. When they all looked at him, they got scared and started crying. One look at him, they thought that he was going to die anyway, so they abandoned him in the hospital and they went back to Tanzania. When they got there, they told people in their country that there was a Tanzanian man dying in Mozambique. It was not long after then when people from his country came to pick him up. It was in July 2018 when he finally returned to Tanzania. He was really happy and they started treating him slowly by slowly. The doctors always used to come to check on him almost each and every time. This was something that he had never seen before. He was happy about the way that he was being treated. As time went by, the doctors kept on telling him that he was going to be fine. He also says that he had started feeling better. Little did he know that he was being attended to by students who were under internship and after three days he was transferred to a bigger and better hospital. He went through scans for a checkup and the results were given to his brothers who were told that he will never be able to work again. When they had this, they abandoned him in the hospital and they walked away. Now he was in the hospital all alone. The doctors kept on asking if he had got his results each and every day for a month. He noticed that there was something that they weren't telling him. He got scared and he knew that this was bad news. One day, a doctor got the nerve, came to him and he said that Adam will never walk again because his backbone was broken. I asked him three times just to be sure if it was true, but it was. I covered my face with the bed sheets and I did not know what to say anymore. The doctors thought I was traumatized. They always used to come, sit on my bed and try to comfort me. The situation was getting worse as days went by because I had started rotting. It got to a point where the doctors used to come and cut off the rotting part while I was watching. 
one of the doctors came and told me that I will never survive. He advised me to go back home and spend my last days there. As they were cutting the rotting parts of my leg, they cut the muscles that held the lower part of the legs. The next morning, I saw flesh falling off. It was now the bones remaining. He says that it is maggots that had been eating his legs all the time that he was sleeping. After then, he was taken for surgery to remove his leg. The next day, they came to remove another, but he refused and he said that he was going to die anyway. Adam asked the doctors where they were taking his legs. He thought that they wanted to bury him part by part. Other doctors came to tell him to accept and lose both his legs so that he could save his life. He still refused, but the doctors kept on persisting until he accepted too. He signed the papers, and when it was time for surgery, he refused. They said that they were going to inject him with some painkillers, and after then, he slept. By the time he woke up, both his legs were now gone. One of the doctors told him that he was the one that removed it, and he did it so that he could save Adam's life. They carried out one last operation so that the remaining wounds wouldn't catch infections. They inserted tubes into his intestines, and this is where he urinated and passed out the body's waste material from. He says that a lot of patients in that hospital were always dying one day after another. He was always scared, thinking that he was the next. After those operations, his private parts were also spoiled and damaged. They developed a very big hole, and now urine was not passing out from the tubes anymore. It all poured out through that big hole. Another surgery was needed and it was done. Now they had to cut off his manhood in order to block that hole. He spent two years in the hospital and he thanks the doctors that spent a lot of time taking care of him. He was now supposed to go out but he never knew that he could live in a normal society because he was used to being indoors and going out was something that he never dreamt about. The doctors advised me and they said that my life had changed now. In a normal society, they were going to call me disabled and other sorts of names. They said that I should be ready and prepared for that. My brothers, they never came back to see me because they thought that I was going to die soon after they left. When he came to society, what happened was unbelievable. He met a girl that they became friends. She took responsibility and did each and everything for him. She rented a house, bought him some necessities, and this bed as well. After then, he got a friend that they lived with for about a year. When he noticed that living with Adam was so hard, he packed up his belongings and he left. Now he lives with him. He is the one that takes care of him and washes his wounds. He is called Ikamo Musadeus. He comes from Wanza, Tanzania, and he is a father to one child. He says that he came here to Dar es Salaam in 2016. He was a friend of the man that was living with Adam. He always used to come and visit him, and this is how he met Adam and they became good friends. Musa lived in his elder brother's house, who is a soldier. It is a single room, and when he returned, Musa had to find a place to stay, so he came to ask Adam and his friend if he could stay for a few nights. The moment he stepped into the house, his friend that was living with Adam walked away saying that he couldn't manage a life with Adam because it was so hard. Musa came to check where Adam was sleeping and he found him rotting, which means that that man wasn't even taking care of him like he should. Musa decided to stay for good and take care of Adam and he promises never to abandon him just like his friend did. Adam says that all he wants now is to at least see his children because he misses them a lot. He says that it is hard to admit that he lost both his legs. Sometimes he wakes up trying to stand, forgetting that he does not have legs, and then he ends up falling down. He thanks the Lord because when he was in the hospital, he always used to have negative thoughts like committing suicide, but now he does not have such thoughts anymore and he is happy for that. All he tells everyone that is watching is that none of us knows our future. 
We never know what is going to happen to us tomorrow and this is why we should always pray and be kind to each and every one. He needs a lot in his daily life and both of them cannot work. He must have food and other basic needs which are very expensive and makes their life even more hard and they need support in order to survive. The funds that will be used to help Adam get food and treatment will be donated via Giving Life. A link that is in the description of this video and pinned in the topmost comment by Afrimax English. Share Adam's story to the rest of the world. Thank you for watching. My name is Prince. This is Afrimax English. Do not forget to subscribe.